Dr. Linda asked for Denny Bear it, that he's the heart said not in the condition to something taking place with his heart. So she asked for prayer for him uh, this morning. There may be other requests as well. Brother Francis as well, yes. Yes. Okay, she needs a touch as well. And Sister Faye as well, okay. Let's all lift up our hearts to the Lord. Heavenly Fathers, we come before thee this morning. We thank you, Lord, that we can approach thee, Lord, the true and living God. And Lord, I know that you knew these requests, Lord, even before they were asked. Lord, I just pray that you would extend thy hand and touch those that need the healing, Lord, in body. And those that may be not only in body, but in spirit as well. Lord, we have come here to worship and to fellowship with thee. Have thy way in this service, I pray this morning. Bless thy nation, Israel. In that wonderful name we ask this morning, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. You can be seated this morning and have the song leader come lead us in the song service. Anybody have a song on their heart today? This morning?
In the red book, 17 in the red book.
I'd like to do number 63 in the in the red book. <coughs> I have found a deep peace that I never had known and the joy that this world Since I yielded control of my body and soul to my wonderful, wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, 
thank the Lord today. Yesterday, <clears throat> we were, I was kind of busy doing this and that and a few other things, and it just seemed like everything I touched went wrong, but I'm just thankful that the Lord is there. I just kind of got to sit and think, and he's right there. I hope I said that right, but he was just, he's wonderful. I thank him. Does anybody else have a testimony?
have a testimony? Sister Linda, do you have a song? Pa 
Praise the Lord also. Uh, I heard Mike's testimony. Mine's pretty well the same for yesterday. I was doing something different that I typically don't do that kind of work, and I was doing something yesterday. And when your mind's not focused on the Lord and you're just focused on what you got to do and stuff, and it seemed everything I did was just backwards. And, and, uh, I was actually driving down the road on the highway. I had just finished a, a little job and I had all my tools in the back of the truck and a bunch of junk in the back of the truck. And uh, when I'm driving on the highway, I look in my mirror and I see my tailgates down. So my heart just sank, right? I'm thinking, oh no. I could just picture all my tools 10 miles down the road and all over the highway. So I pull over and uh, and I get out, and lo and behold, tailgate's down, but all the tools are there. There was a rake across my tailgate that was holding all the tools in there. Everything was there. And it seems to me like the Lord just stopped me in my tracks. and Because my heart had just sank. I'm thinking, oh, this day is terrible. And then when I seen that, I just, just thankful. Just reminded me that we gotta take the time every day. Because I typically start my day meditating on the Lord. Don't remember doing it yesterday, so anyway, I'm just so thankful. Thankful for days like that to remind me. All inside us, locked in a jail. For 
goes along about midnight Holy Spirit prevailed Well, the earth started shaking They began to sing Prison doors broke open Hands and feet were free My God delivered In the darkest hours My God delivers His mighty power Well, He's done it before And He'll do it again My God delivers From the wages of sin Trouble may come now Say to a rain Just to remember The price was already paid Back there at Calvary where Jesus' blood was shed Was a gift of atonement God delivered to men My God delivered In the darkest hour my God delivers with His mighty power. Well, He's done it before, and He'll do it again. My God delivers from the wages of sin. Trouble may come now, say to a rain. Just you remember. Price was already paid back there at Calvary. When Jesus' blood was shed, it was a gift of atonement. And God delivered to men. In the darkest hours, my God delivers with his mighty power. Well, he's done it before, and he'll do it again. My God delivers from the wages of sin. That burden has you broken. You just want to run away. So if you feel like running, run to Jesus. You can. If you feel like running, run to Jesus. In his arms you can rest. Peace of mind and restoration. Seems like a million miles away. Feels like the world is on your shoulders. And you don't want to face the day. So if you feel like running, 
run to Jesus. You can lean on his breath if you feel like running. Run to Jesus. In his arms you can rest. I know what you are thinking. That you won't see the light of day. And that burden has you broken. And you just want to run away. So if you feel like running, run to Jesus. You can lean on his breath. If you feel like running, run to Jesus. In his arms you can rest. You can trust his unseen hand. He'll hold you in your storm. It's all part of his He's waiting at the door. If you feel like running, run to Jesus. You can lean on his breath. If you feel like running, Run to Jesus, in his arms you can rest, in his arms you can rest. listening to that religious channel and I was listening to what this individual was saying and it was good and all, all of a sudden right out of the blue he touched on something that I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was lacking I didn't need anybody to tell me that what he was saying, it was the truth. My flesh was reaching out to try to turn the radio off. I didn't want to hear this. But I knew what he was saying. God was speaking to me without a shadow of a doubt. I knew. Because you see, in my heart, I had been thinking about this for a while. And I kept, no, kept putting it off and putting it off. You know, I'm retired. I've been retired for 11 years. And I always make it a point in the morning, take time, read the word, and I'll, uh, I'll put it this way. I'll talk 
to God in a, you know, just in a small talk, put that way. But the individual, it was so strong what he was saying. He was saying, you think your nickel and dime prayer, God's going to answer your nickel and dime prayer? When Daniel went 21 days to receive an answer for his prayer, I didn't need anybody to tell me that what I was lacking. And I believe that the individual, he, he was given an example how the church world, you know, they, they, they do this and they'll do this and they'll, it's like a progressive thing. And, and once, they get, once they get to that place, all of a sudden they have it all. They, they won't go anywhere. And they become complacent. And then what he was saying, it was concerning prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. And I believe that that's something that is very, very important. For me, I, re I know that when I take the time, when I take the time to go and there's times that I get discouraged because when I pray about something and I don't get an answer, I get discouraged. I'm not going to pray about this. Cause... And then I think, well, is it because this is what I want? Or... But I try to pray according to what God wants, what he, his will and purpose. But sometimes you pray about something that maybe you want. And you want it so bad that you can't wait. And you think you've got to have it. And when you don't get it, well, maybe you... Maybe you may get upset or, you, you, you know, you try to question God, whatever. But I find when I take the time to go into my closet and, and, and allow the Spirit of God to help me to pray, because I don't know what to pray for. And I know what the Scripture says concerning it, that the Spirit will intercede and, and you know. But I, I realize for myself, that we're living in a day and hour that it's a battle, it's a struggle, it's not going to get any easier. He that endured to the end, you think it's going to be easy? Nope. When they first started out, oh, you know, the mountaintop experiences and joy. But it's going to be a battle to the very end. Yep. It ain't going to get any easier because that spirit of the world is trying to get you to the place that you stop. Stop walking. Stop talking. Are you walking? Are you talking with the Lord? Yeah. So I just wanted to share that with you because that's that pertains to me. But maybe I thought maybe I just felt that maybe some of you may be going through that. Maybe we're not praying enough. We're not seeking God enough. I'm glad that God can still speak yeah. to your heart because He knows. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what you, you lack. He knows what you struggle with. And I'm saying, I thank God that He's a merciful and a loving God. And He will supply our needs. And I thank Him this morning that He's still on the throne, that He's still interceding. And every name that's written in the last book of life have to worry. If my name is written there, don't worry about it. Just keep walking on with God. Yeah. Keep praying for wisdom and knowledge, for strength. For we, we need strength. Yeah. I can have all the wisdom and all the knowledge, but if I don't allow the Spirit of God to, for that wisdom and that knowledge to come into my heart to make me strong, not in me, but to put my trust in the Lord. That's what we need to do. We need to trust the Lord in this day and hour. And that's what I, that is the desire of my heart. Amen.
I'm not glad that you're having to go through troubles and trials, but it's it's necessary for our growth. And praise the Lord. He's, he's the one that's leading us along, praise the Lord. And Heavenly Father, as we come at this part of the service, we thank you, Lord, for the things you've done for us, Lord, and we thank you for the songs of Zion and the testimony this morning. But, Lord, as we would look into your word, I just pray you use this vessel of clay to receive you. And, Lord, whatever you would have for us in the hour that we live in now, in that name, wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and amen. You can be seated this morning. This is an hour different than all other times that is in the that's been down through especially in this grace age. And you say, why is it a bit different? Not different that uh, it's, you can't see and understand. But we're living in the last generation. We're almost ready for the last decade to begin with. And in previous days and times where God did have servants on the scene, you would have, as that move, whatever period of time you look at, that God would bring his word and see how the people would Receive it or not receive it. But then there was always another move that where God now brings another servant and that would more or less point out the truth of the previous one. But in this last generation, this is going to be the last chapter of the book of Acts. This is the third watch. When this is over, there will not be another move to you ought to inspect this period of time. And as I was thinking on these things, what is God doing in this hour? I thank God that he's given us wonderful revelatory truth. And that's all in wonderful and how since 1963, God gave an abundance of truth. Actually, fulfilling Isaiah chapter 30, verse 26, we're living in a sevenfold time. But let's look at the root of the whole thing. Being blessed with so much, really, in one sense, God is trying to get us to cultivate that Holy Spirit to recognize his word. Because that's why it's been different in this third watch. It seems like things may be going away, but God has it in full control. If there's ever a time that the pressure's been applied, is what do you believe? Are you trusting on that Holy Spirit, that comforter that he's given you and I? Because really... It all boils down to that base. And we need to cultivate a working relationship with that comforter of the Holy Spirit to know when he's talking and when he's not. Because there's not going to be another period of time where you can readjust after this third watch. It's the seventh seal is broken, that's it. Yes, there's things for that. But really in this hour... What is the prime 
important for the true believer is to grow in that Holy Spirit, trusting him, not man. And if we're just trusting, well, it sounds good, it looks good, and all those things there, you are not cultivating that Holy Spirit. That's where we need to seek his face, and Lord, show me inside that comforter, and we can turn to in John, the 16th chapter, and I think I have it up on the board there. All right. Now, yes, Jesus spoke this to the disciples before the day of Pentecost. He was still on earth. And it is a very, very important thing that the believer is going to require no matter what age he's in, to know that the, you are walking with the Lord. And Jesus spoke in this manner, Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Who is that spirit of truth to begin with? Is it Jesus himself? The scripture declares that Jesus is the head of the church, but the head of Jesus is the great eternal spirit, is God himself. Jesus has his work cut out as being high priest. That's, he's still there this morning. But he that worketh all things in the believer's life is God himself. It's that Holy Ghost that the believer has received And it's so easy to set aside the Holy Ghost and just to listen to something wonderful with our minds. And we've got to realize we can't just trust that. Although it is ordained for the word to be preached by men, not by angels. But sometimes we have to incorporate that Holy Spirit. First of all, how do we get the Holy Spirit? You have to do so many penance and things like that? No. It's very simple. First of all, there has to be a recognition. Lord, I'm a sinner. Yes, we can look at sin of well, yeah, lying, cheating, and all these things, and gambling, and all that other stuff. The sinner he's really looking at is the sin of unbelief in his word. Lord, I'm a sinner. I don't believe you. I, 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 I'm not born again. I, I don't know nothing about your word. I'll put it that simple. And when we get to the place, Lord, I can't save myself. Please come in and save me. And, you, and the Lord will show that you, you and I have to look at Jesus Christ that paid the price for the sin of unbelief. And then when the genuine experience is there, something happens in your heart. Yes, on Azusa Street, how wonderful that would be. He would come, you'd speak in tongues, roll on the floor, or whatever, God, it would be a visible demonstration. But God's used that to initiate the time period of this last 100 years or so. But the difference is, Sometimes the devil come around, do you really have the Holy Ghost? Are you sure? Or is it just your ideas that you're thinking about? Where you will know is when there's a change in your desire. Because the Holy Ghost will change your desire, wanting to know more about your Heavenly Father. Not just religious, but inside there's a desire for the true believer. I want to know my Heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son. And when that takes place, then, like it says in chapter John, first, the first uh, chapter, He gave them power to become the sons and daughters of God. It's not power like you would have 
running an automobile, a big powerful automobile. But it is power to change your life. The power to get rid of the old things you thought was true. And when God's word would come in, then you would see the truth. That's where the power lies. Now, when he gave us that power, that born, that born again experience, that we have that power, it's not for us to use it like you want to. He'll work with you, making a change in you and me. But the first and prime directive he's looking at is to get you to believe the word. Once he's got you established on you need it to be baptized in water. That's, you can be born again before you hit the water. But God knows when you're going to hit the water. Or you can hit the water first and then after. God is sovereign that way. But once that has took place, now there's something inside you that would brings in another scripture. With that Holy Spirit, yes, he's concerned about the unbelief that we had that we're thinking what was God's word that is not God's word. But at the same time, he's given us, if we seek him and look to that Holy Spirit, mortify the deeds of the flesh. What does it mean? You, me, mortifying it. It's with the power and the presence that he gave us. It seems like we have to kill it a thousand times. You know what I mean by that? But he's seen you clean through the blood because there's no unbelief in you because you have accepted his offering. <coughs> Praise the Lord. And actually, when we look at the basic of things, that's where he wants us to grow in is communicating with that Holy Spirit that he's given you with, or me. Well, how do I know it's real? Like he says here. Howbeit, when the Spirit of truth come, he will guide you. He's doing the guiding. It is God doing the work. His Spirit is everywhere. Well, Jesus Christ is not everywhere. He's on the throne of glory. Although the two spirits are one in purpose. They, but it is your heavenly father. Because we all have, what, two fathers? One. God, the great eternal spirit. Now he says here, he will guide you into all truth in the first week. It's going to be a lifetime because he knows how much change that we can take and the trials and the tests that comes with it. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Oh, this third watch, this generation that's now on ground now. A lot has lost of that Holy Spirit showing things to come. They're stuck in the days of Brother Branham and Brother Jackson. You say that and they get upset. Why should they get upset? Maybe they have another spirit. The word of God should not be offensive to the Holy Ghost believer. He should receive it with joy and immediately. Because in Luke, the 12th chapter, when he comes to serve meat, he says to open up to him immediately. Well, Lord, I'm in the third watch. Uh, I'll wait till the seventh seal is broke then to receive the thing from our, my hour. That's an intellectual believer that would look at it that way. Yes, there's a lot of voices bringing a lot of different revelations out there. But if you have the Holy Ghost somewheres, there's got to be a true word in this hour. And if you can't recognize none of it, and you have not moved anywhere from 2005, 
either there's a spirit controlling you or you are an intellectual believer. But we're going to go into some other things as we go on here. He says, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he will show you things to come. Now, when he shows things to come, it's not you just digging it out of the word. That can be the Spirit can confirm certain things. But God always has a ministry, a main servant that he has all down through time. And he'll use that servant to say something, and he may be 5,000 miles away from you, and you haven't heard it, so you're not responsible for it. But when it comes to your ears, it may come to your ears two or three years later. But when it comes on ground then, that Holy Spirit that brings it there should be also moving on both ends at that time. All right. All the things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and show it to you. Now, from a denominational point of view, all the things the Father has, Jesus is saying, they're mine. What does the Father have? The only thing he has is his word. And it's not just the word of salvation. There's a word for every generation, every move of God. All the things the Father has, they're mine. Therefore said I, that he, the Holy Spirit, will take of mine and show to you. That's just not your basic salvation like the, de like the denominational church preaches, which can preach it quite right. Just accurate sometimes, if you want to, except for they, sometimes they don't believe in the God, they don't believe in the Godhead, they're a Trinity. But when they're using other things concerning your sanctification, how you should live, they can be dead on the money. Right, Brother Gary? God can use that to speak to you if the preacher that's in your place doesn't speak to you at that point in time. Because you needed that special thing at that special time. He does it. He knows everything. He's the Spirit of God is not limited by time or space. So he'll take of mine. Now Jesus is saying, he'll take of mine and show it unto you. And don't put blinders off while it's whatever he'd done when he preached, when he was here on earth, and the things he told the disciples in the first church age. Jesus knows a whole lot more that the Father gave him than just that period of time. Because when I read the book of Revelation, what does it say? Blessed he that hears the things that's in this book, which pertain to our time, the end time. That's just as important to God, because why? He wants to bring a bride to completion. You are not completed by what was done in the early church. You need it, but you won't be completed. You'll be lacking or, mi or missing something. Because we're responsible for this hour, for that book of Revelation, and the truth that has not been opened up, that will complete the whole bride. It might. I don't think I'm talking through my hat, and I don't have a hat either this morning either. So all the things the Father that the Father has unless you only think that the Father only had the thing what Jesus spoke on when he walked on earth in the days of the apostles. The Father has a whole lot more word. Therefore, said I, he, the Holy Spirit, God, your heavenly Father, he shall take of mine, because why does he say take of mine? Because he's given it to Jesus. In glory, he has given his word, his thought, into a, his only begotten son that has a glorified body. And we can't see what, when it comes to pertaining how to 
behave and it's such like or how things do unfold that God has to express it through a vessel that we can see something. We can't see thin air. How many can see thin air? How many can see where the wind is blowing? You can feel it, but you don't see it. So that's why the Father gave all things to the Son, and he just didn't give him the things for salvation. Actually, when he comes in on John on the Isle of Patmos, he gave John, that apostle John, that book of Revelation, which was, yes, something for that day, but most of it is for this time. And that is what the Father has, is the word that he gave his son, and his son is now sharing it and imparting it unto you and I in this hour that we live in. For a little while you shall not see, see me again, a little while you shall see me because I go to the Father. Now, like I mentioned before, we are not living in 1963, nor are we living in 1967, nor are we living in 2005. You're in 2018 now. These things that you see in a pictorial form on the screen or on the video if you want to. These things the Father has reserved for this hour. And the Holy Ghost, when he speaks, he speaks truth. No devil in hell can destroy God's revelation. They can try, but they will not succeed. Because God's words don't change. Lo and be tied for the person that tries to say that's false. Because they must have another spirit, especially if they heard it. Now, someone has never heard it. Then God does not hold them responsible till they come to their ear, and the Holy Ghost will make it real to the true believer. Let's look at some example before we go much further. Oh, another thing, when I was searching for things on, on the Internet and I just happened to look at certain images and so forth, guess what I found? They had this one here that we, we've done, was there on the Internet. Google got a hold of it. Google, Google got everything. And there, too, at the end of that church age, I'd have to say, is Jesus wearing, a girt, is he girded about the waist or about the paps? And my Bible tells me about the waist is a high priest. About the paps is a judge. And there's much rejection today that when that seven seal is broke, Jesus becomes judge. Actually, I was talking to the brothers and sisters from Australia and I come across something very interesting. If you want to turn to Second Timothy this morning, we've used this scripture many times about the judgment seat of Christ. And if you're not interested in searching, the Bible talks about that we should diligently search, not ideas, but the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy Ghost has brought a truth, then the child of God should be able to see it. But if he don't, what does that mean? Something's wrong. Some sort of opinions or ideas is just holding them back because of whatever reason. It could be that. It says, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead. 
Who's he judging? Bride. The dead are those who are in glory already. Now the movement today don't want to say what the quick is because they don't know. Quick is concerning someone that's made alive that's living still on the earth. And if they have to admit that, they choke. It's the quick, he shall judge the quick and the dead. Where? In heaven? Come on now this morning. Oh, but Brother Jackson and Brother Branham said, well, the judgment seat of Christ is in glory. Mm-hmm. And God had every right to allow those men to speak the, what the revelation they had in their hour. Now you might be, and if that is true in that, that respect, then you have to go on and cross out his appearing. Because where is his appearing? Where does he appear? He's not on earth and he appears in heaven now. He's going to do this. His appearing is for his bride. So that tells me, if you say, well, we believe what Brother Branham said, what Brother Jackson said, then you are wrong. Where do you put his appearing? If you're so right concerning those things. How can you twist the word of God to make it sound something else? His appearing. <laughs> He's not sitting on the throne, maybe now he's appearing again in heaven. No, it's down here. He, we're going to see him in the air. And his appearing while the judgment is taking place is through that angelic being that appears here on earth to do the quick that's on earth. While the literal Lord Jesus Christ is doing the bride, that sees bride in glory. And because they have to come individually before him, and let's say there's 10 million bride or a million bride in heaven. And since there's no night, no day, he can do the interview night and day. He's not going to do it in a month. You don't interview people. Especially a million or 10 million, peop 10 million people. It'll take more than two years. Oh, well, we just close our mind. It's all going to happen just it's so fast in heaven. Not any faster than other things that took him before. And so, at his appearing. Now, here's another trick question that the, really trips him up. At his appearing and his kingdom. That is two different occasions. One's going to be at his appearing here. That he's going to judge the quick and the dead. His kingdom is not in the seventh seal time factor. It's not even in the week of Daniel, the seventh week. His kingdom is in the millennium. And he's going to judge the quick and the dead there too as well. Well, who? Well, we don't know who it is. There, there can't be. We, uh, no, Brother Brown never said it. Brother Jackson never said it. So we can't believe it. Because they are a confirmed message, a vindicated message. You poor blind person. At the beginning of his millennium, the dead that's going to be judged is your white robes. They're not judged on salvation. They're going to be judged for their reward. That's when they get their resurrected bodies. And the quick, it's not your mortal people that's come through the week of Daniel. It's your 144,000 that have been sealed in the week of Daniel, not like some other groups that are saying the 144,000 are sealed before the week, which is an error, which the Bible does not support. And if we want, if we, if we want to do this morning, we can go into that subject quite deeply and show that it would be an error that they're sealed before. 
My goodness. But this is the hour we're living in. When it came in 1967, because this is referring to the time that Jerusalem was taken by the Jews. At the same time, the prophet has been off the scene. And the apostle Paul speaks in, I think, Romans chapter 11, that now we're living in what's called the fullness of the Gentile. That fullness of the Gentile represents to you and I the last generation. Because Jesus talks about in Luke chapter 21, this, uh, sorry, in Matthew 24 and, and 32, this generation shall not pass away till all things be fulfilled. That would all transpire in what Paul would call the fullness of the Gentile. When, that, when they would come in. In Hebrews, now I've gotten away about salvation. I know there's some young people here that, that needs to know how God works. And I remember the battles that I went through. When the Lord got a hold of me, I remember that some tried to get me to read the Bible, even one gave me a Jehovah Bible to read. It was like reading the phone book. I had no interest. But when he got a hold of me, lightning didn't flash. The world didn't turp turpsy. Something came in and says, that word is true. Then there come a different outlook. Then now I couldn't get my nose out of the word of God because there's a hunger. And, brother, and if they want to quote Brother Branham, if there ever is a evidence that you have the Holy Spirit is the ability to receive the word of God. Oh, but do I you don't receive it all at once. But if you believe that God has done something for you and he's given you a hunger, that hunger don't come from Satan. That hunger comes from God, that he gets you to want to know about what God's plan is and what our Heavenly Father has for us and how the Lord Jesus Christ came and died for your my sins. Yes, you may stumble here and there, but if you're genuinely born again, he's not going to let you go. And if he has to bring hornets to turn you around, he will. Now, we have hornets out here, so be careful. No, I, I just was in there. And so, therefore, that Holy Spirit will take the word of God and when you came to the altar and the Holy Spirit is pressing on you that desire to know more about him, do we take the attitude, well, in time, Lord, you'll reveal it to me when I'm in a good mood and in the right place. And Immediately. Not yesterday or 100 years down the road. And when I look at the Apostle Paul, or actually, we can use uh, different examples. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus has been gone. He's given the, apo the, the Apostle in the upper room the Holy Spirit. And as pa Peter is preaching, and as he's preaching, they said, well, men and brethren, what, what should we do? He says, repent, every one of you. I didn't hear or things written in the Bible says, well, now uh, I'm going to think about it. And when the time's right, maybe Lord will get me in a condition that I can receive this. And, you know, in time he will do it. Immediately, they believed. The apostle Paul. He 
he, before he was saved, he was persecuting the Christians. He had been in Damascus because God had caused his eyes to be blinded and had Ananias to pray for him to he give him his sight back. Then he started, he's, he was changed. He, then then he, he received the Spirit of God and he would now be on the road looking into God's word. So he goes to Jerusalem. And as he goes to Jerusalem, the apostles that were there were a little leery about him because they heard the rumors how he was put to death or, or he had stoned Stephen and so forth. So they weren't too sure about him. Well, that, the apostles that were there, they, sometimes God doesn't show you everything. And so they were a bit leery about him. But finally, they sort of kind of accepted him. But then God now draws the Apostle Paul on the backside of the Arabian Desert for three years or so. And he says, I did not converse with flesh and blood, but with God Almighty himself. And of the major revelation that Paul receives, that's where he received it in Arabia. Paul didn't say, well, Lord, now wait a minute. There's too many things. I want to put some things on the shelf here. If the Holy Ghost is in there, that desire wants to know everything. Immediately. Sometimes we're, like we are Gentiles, I want to know everything yesterday. And so Paul is receiving a great amount of truth. So now he goes back to Jerusalem. At the same time, there's an apostle called Barnabas. He had a work up in Tarsus. And it was too much work for him, so he had heard about Paul, so he says, I'll go get Paul and bring him up to where I am to help me with the work. Well, as he brings Paul there, Paul doesn't take the attitude, hey, Lord showed me what I am, Barnabas, you step out of the way. No, he started preaching what God gave him. And Barnabas didn't say, well, now, Paul, you're trying to make up too much of yourself now. But remember, I brought you here. It's my work. It's, not, it's nobody's work. It's the Lord that does the work. So as Paul is ministering, many believed five years later. Right there. Yes, granted, as he was there with Barnabas. It's not till later that he goes to Ephesus that God, he went first to the Jews. They refused him. But some believed. And then there was some, it was drawing people. So he, Paul thought, well, I need to do something. So he approached this man called Tyrannus, can I borrow your school to, to use it for the word of God? And, and he said, yes. And for two years or so, Many came in. Now, it didn't take them two years to receive what Paul was saying. Uh-uh. And it was so invigorated by what God was doing when he brings his word on ground, once he got that established, yes, the churches in Asia Minor never hadn't heard everything Paul preached in Ephesus. But when he went to those places, they received it gladly. What's wrong with this generation? How can a man say he has the Holy Ghost and deny the word for your day? Now, last week I had spoken about how, I showed a, a small clip from Brother Branham concerning uh, the truth, the spirit of truth. And yes, the video went on there, but I didn't have the whole, the, the whole word, audio that I wanted. And so yes, later on I went and then spiced it in there. That's why you see no, no picture. But that don't mean, that don't, you can listen to the whole thing. You can go online and, 
They have all kinds of Brother Branham sermons up there. But how many caught the thought? He says, men can preach what God has done in the past. And they can do that in every move of God, or whether they, you talk about concerning the Pentecostals or whether the Evangelical, or they can all do that. And they can talk readily what God has already confirmed, revealed, concerning that he's coming. There's going to be a millennium. And depending on where the revelation, they can speak of both ends. But Brother Branham identifies this. But God has a lot of trouble for man to believe his word for his day. Not believe that part or that one in the future or the one in the past. And another thing that came, comes to pass. When we're using types, the life of Abraham, the life of Moses, the life of Joshua, it's all been established. And preachers will take that as an example to point out what's going on today. And sometimes it's just used to hit of things they don't like today. Now, if you want to identify a spirit that has of a wrong spirit, that will take types of the Old Testament. that will be probably 100% accurate. And some of them can describe it in beautiful detail. But it's what they're trying to type it today. That's where you've got to watch that spirit. Because they're trying to influence their ideas of what things should be. In... Now concerning the fivefold ministry, that's in the third watch. It's a fivefold ministry. Men can jerk out of Brother Jackson's contenders and the Word of God what the fivefold ministry should be doing, and they twist it to their mental idea what the fivefold ministry should be doing. But they won't take some other parts that Brother Jackson has said that really points that they're not really telling the truth. Yes, there's a fivefold ministry. Yes, Jesus is the head. He is directing the fivefold ministry. And it's not going to come together on just men loving one another and hoping everything's just going to gel together. God's going to have to use a vessel somewhere. Well, you say you're setting yourself up. That's what they said about Brother Jackson, too. And Brother Brown the same way. It's not the question of the, who the man is, but who's preaching something relevant to this day? That's the question. And so, therefore, it will be the leadership of the... Now, when it says in the fivefold ministry, there's apostles, plural, prophets, plural, teachers, plural, evangelists, plural, and pastors, plural. It's not just on one apostle. I'm glad he included more than one for this fivefold ministry. And when it comes to bringing things new and old, let's see how it, it worked in Brother Bram's day. He was the main man. He brought things new and things old. And the ministry was there at that time. They would take what he said and preach things new and old. It's not them that brought it, and it's not Brother Bram that brought it. It's the Lord Jesus Christ that gave it to him. And so for, therefore, the ministry takes that and uh, divides it out among the people to expound it more in their own words. It's the same thing as in the days of Brother Jackson. God was speaking to that main man. 
and the ministry that was there at the time would take of the things new and old that he would bring, and they would preach that in whatever ministry they had in their day. That's the order of the fivefold ministries. Putting it another way is nothing but a terror ter trying to tell you that it's, it's that way. The time for playing church is over. You don't have another 10 years before that seventh seal is broke. And if you haven't seen anything in 10 years, then where are you going to be in the next 10? Well, the Lord will show me in time. My foot. You have to see it, and then the day that he brings it to you when you hear it. Because what does it mean? Well, I can't see it. Yes, it may be true. You hear something one time, and you heard it just that one sermon, and you didn't catch everything. But just to throw it on the shelf, well, it's, you know, that's a wrong attitude. That's a wrong spirit. That's why when we look at Luke chapter 12, and he that didn't watch in his hour going to have his house or his church broken. Where there's no fresh revelation, if God allows time long enough, the people will starve. They'll start to get weary. You have to boast them up, rile them up, get them to come to church. You, you got to do this and you got to do that. Are you trying to make them to do that? No, if there's a desire and a hunger... They will come. Sheep likes to be fed. And if I know sheep, they just don't want to eat the old grass they ate and it's all burnt out. They want to have fresh grass in the, in the pasture. It's like the example Brother Brown used concerning the eagle. He was there among the hens. Cluck, 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 cluck. And the, this and we cluck, 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 that. And then he hears that scream of that eagle. That little eagle says, I don't know, maybe I'll wait and see what that's all about. Oh, yeah, I'll carry on with the chicken here. No. He says, what's that noise? <laughs> what's that sound? That means the Holy Ghost is in there and says, what's that sound? Yes, while God is having a true word on ground, Satan has some false word on ground. And to put God's true word with the false word all together, you ain't going to fare no better than those that bring the false word. Because you don't want to grow. You don't want to see your day. There's something hindering you. Am I saying they're all lost? No. God can wake someone up at a certain part, but while he's under that state, it doesn't look good. How many, while Brother Jackson was alive, and he's bringing things, well, I don't know, I just, well, maybe someday I'll get at it. I'll look at it, and then God will show it to me in time, you know. Yeah, he, because I'm his child, he's bound to show it to me. That's the wrong attitude. That's not being immediate, and that's not being diligent. Doesn't the Bible says we are to work out our own salvation with trembling and fear? Well, I'm going to go to here in 2 Corinthians. Chapter 11, verse 11, around. Now, Paul had his trouble for his day as well. If you read it in the Old English, you can see up to a certain part. It depends how well you're versed in the Old King James language. 
in verse 11 says, Wherefore, because I love you not, God knows. Paul is saying, don't you know that I love you? That's what he means. But what I do and that I will do, that I may cut off the occasion from them which desire occasion, that therein the glory that they may be found even as we. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing for his minister to be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their work. Now let's read it in today's language. Why? Because I have no love for you? Let God be the judge. Now he's speaking to the, to the Princeton church. But what I do and what I'm, go, what I'm where I, sorry, I will go on doing so that I may give no chance to those who are looking for one. That, so that in the cause of their pride, that's the reason, that they may be seen to be the same as we are. For such are false apostles, workers of deceit, making themselves seem like apostles of Christ. It is no wonder that even Satan himself is able to take the form of angels of light. So it is no great thing is it is no great thing if his servants make themselves seem to be servants of righteousness, whose end will be the reward of their works. Somewhere this is going to come to a judgment, not the judgment seat of Christ, but judgment must begin at the house of God. The bride can't go on with different ideas and thinking we're okay, I've got the Holy Ghost. God is going to bring this thing to a judgment. And if we hadn't been sincere or diligent in looking God's word, then there is a judgment awaiting for me or for those that go down that road. It is serious because there's nothing, the Holy Ghost is not zapping people all over the place now. There will be a time that will be real serious. So can you see with all those things that are going on, yes, there's, there's this that's talked about here, that and there, and then this group doing that, and this doing the other thing. Don't just look at that. What God is trying to do, he's causing, he's allowing condition. What are you doing with that Holy Ghost you have? Are you trusting in him or on your intellect of the things that you knew of the past to judge something with? If, you hit the, if you've been walking with the Lord all along, that may be fine. But if not, then you're going to get an awful surprise. Well, I know I've been all over the map. Yes, Jesus is going to be judge. Revelation chapter 1, as you see him with the Girded about the pap, that's where it is. And like I mentioned last week, you'll find in Luke chapter 12, when he's coming to deliver meat, he's girded about the waist, which represent him being a high priest, and he still is a high priest. But when that seventh seal is broke, he no longer have it here. He's got it up here. And it, Oh, but we'll try, we'll try, well, maybe we got the wrong interpretation or the English language wasn't just right. We'll try to find some sort of scapegoat to, to make sure that that's not the truth that what, he's say, that what you're saying, Brother Fred. Well, to your, to your own Lord, the Lord will know what truth is. To me, it's such a beautiful picture. God has not left us without in the hour that you live in. 
But if I can stress anything this morning, let's work with that Holy Spirit he's given us to become sons and daughters of God. Not just from a babe and just start walking and, and straddling, but f- to be completed, to be perfected. Perfected doesn't mean you're going to remove every little thing in your life that you can. I know it says mortify those, it says mortify those things of the flesh. When temptation comes, you mortify it. But when you mortified it, was it done? It will never happen anymore? No, no. While you're in this mortal flesh, Satan can tempt you and I. But what God is more concerned, that's the work we have to do, is to keep the devil of the things that we shouldn't be doing away from us. But that doesn't make you ready for the, for the rapture. It is God's looking, his blood is there for the unbelief part or the believing part of his word. It's not just the focus there. Because if the focus is just there, like I said before, he's not going to rapture a bride with a miniskirt, not in a complete, full word. Completed for the hour, for the grace age. Well, all right. Yesterday, I... Before I talked to the brothers and sisters from Australia, <laughs> sometimes you can be empty. I mean, you can pick up any subject and speak about anything. And I've been working outdoors and doing a lot of shoveling uh, dirt and stuff like that, and a bit tired. And says, "Well, Lord, I really don't have anything. I don't know what to do." And the hour's coming up when they want to want to speak. Well. Lo and behold, he said, Brother Fred, can we ask you some questions? We went over an hour and a half, almost an hour and three quarter. There was a hunger there. They are walking with the Lord for this hour. They have their battles like we have our battles. Yes, we must mortify the deeds of the flesh. And if you go home from the church here this morning and somebody cuts you off and and you get upset, Mortify the deed. It may be not the last time you may be cut off going down the road. Right? But when you get a resurrected body, no longer will those temptations ever touch you. Yeah, that's the day I'm looking for. I, oh, that, Lord, hasten thy coming. It's getting leery and heavy, this old walk. But then on the other side, we have to realize that's how he's killing things in us, by the things that we're confronted with. Don't jump out of the, the frying pan into the fire. Hold steady. Patient, because what we seems to be such a big problem and there's no way out, Two, three days after, I wonder what the problem I was so worried about, right? Yes, you're going to get those days as things are going to be heavy on you. But there is some refreshing from the Spirit of God that will lift you up. Are you lifted up this morning? There's a hope. There's going to be a day, no more temptation. There's going to be a day we're going to have a resurrected body. We're going to rule and reign with Christ. What a vacation during the millennium. And you won't have to work so hard to knowing what to do because the Spirit of God is in every one of us and he'll direct you. As long as you have a mouth to speak, we'll be able to rule and reign with Christ. I know sometimes some people say, well, I don't know how I, I can't rule and reign in the millennium. But can you hear his voice? Yes. Do you want to do what he says? Yes. Well, that's all it's required. I mean, that's put in simple terms. So I just want to put your mind at ease. It's going to be a wonderful time in the millennium. And the best of all is the eternal age, when the Spirit of God comes in all in all. 
not just in you, but then in all in all, and the whole planet is redeemed. Praise God. Oh, my. God's word is powerful. It's quick and powerful. It's alive and it's fast. How long does it, God takes to change a heart on a certain thing? Well, Lord, it's been 10 years now. I think, is, it, is it getting through? No, when something comes, he does it. Those that came to the altar, not, not everybody has the same experience. They say, I've been smoking or, or drinking. All of a sudden, you come to the altar. In a moment, it's gone. He can do that. But if there's things in our lives, let's seek the Lord about it. But let's be patient. Remember, he's going to do it in his time, not on, Lord, I've got a list of demands here. I've got some things that need to be done to my life, and I'd like you to do them now. He knows more about us and what we need, when and when. And I better stop because, I, you know, old age is bad. I've been rambling on in the last while. But I, I appreciate your patience. And uh, the Lord is wonderful. Let's just stand at this time. Lord, as we come before thee, Lord, we are nothing in ourselves. The things that we know, Lord, it's only because it's your revelation. No man can claim that they know anything. It's only what, Lord, you reveal in your word. And I pray, Lord, you'd have your way in the days to come. Lead us by thy Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you this morning that the things that you have allowed our eyes to see, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. You can be seated. Have your musician to come in case someone still has a need. When he sees me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy and not as I am.
Yes, when he sees, he sees the blood of the Lamb. He sees me as worthy, Lord, as I am. He Father, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you that we have, we have men that will preach your truth, Lord. I'm thankful to be where I am. And Lord, for all my brothers and sisters, those ones on the internet, I am so thankful, Lord, for what I hear and what I've heard. Lord, give us strength this week, Lord, and this month and this year. Help us to walk on with you, Father. It seems things, things, it seems to be more strife than ever, and it just, but Lord, I know it's all for our good. Lord, just give us strength, and I, I pray for all those that are sick and afflicted. Lord, have your way in their life. Have your way in our lives. And that little tiny nation of Israel, Lord, Lord, have your hand on them, I pray, like you do your little bride. And Lord, like I say, I'm so thankful for these men that expound your truth. And Lord, I'm just dumbfounded sometimes I, for what you've done for all of us. And Lord, give us traveling mercies on the highway, I pray. I ask this all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good Lord.